Hey everyone, I'm back. I told you I'd be back. This time I'm doing another uh, video game memories collecting videos focused on the Sega CD. And I got my notes because I'm going to need them. Um, thank you once again for all you that watched my Sega Saturn collecting and uh, memories video. This is pretty much the same, pretty much going to be the same way. Uh, me talking about some of the things about the Sega CD, my experiences with the Sega CD, and uh, pretty much ultimately what happened with it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy. So, let's talk a little bit about the Sega CD. Now let me just, you bear with me a little because I got a lot of things going on here. I'm not as well put together as other uh, other YouTubers when it comes to this sort of stuff. But without talking about, we, before we even get to the Sega CD and what it is, we have to talk about briefly, because I'll have, this will have its own video, the Sega Genesis. Now this was my original model that I, that I had purchased in 1992. Look, I even wrote my initials on it and I even wrote what it's called in the PAL regions in Japan, Mega Drive. Because I used to read those gaming magazines that not only covered North American uh, releases, it also covered games that were coming out in Japan and in Europe. So I, that was when I was first introduced with the other name of this console. Here in America, the Sega Genesis uh, is the, excuse me, so they called it the Mega Drive elsewhere but here they called it the Sega Genesis so basically what the Sega CD is it's not like the Sega Saturn where the Saturn was this upgrade where the Sega Genesis was a 16-bit system 16-bit video game system and the Saturn was a 32-bit the Sega CD was an attachment for the Sega Genesis to complement well no, I shouldn't say that because that's not that's not true it would enable uh, the, uh, for you to play CD-based games. Now, the first CD-based video game console was the TurboGrafx-16, and then they released a a combined. It was an attachment that would attach to the TurboGrafx-16. Then they released an all-in-one system called the Turbo Duo. I'll talk about that in another video. So that introduced so many possibilities for video games which we take which is in full swing today I mean that's the standard right we don't usually don't play cartridges although the Nintendo Switch went back to cartridges but it's mostly on the CD the media is CDs because it could hold more room better sound quality all that other technical stuff that I don't know that you could probably get from other people but that's what it was it wasn't necessarily another system it was an attachment and um, you would have to buy it was You'd buy CD, system, CD games, and you would have, in theory, maybe better graphics. You would have the, um, you would have better sound because a CD sound. The discs would hold more memory than a cartridge, and it would introduce something that was taking the video game by video game uh, industry by storm. Full motion videos. I think that at that time the industry thought that's where the future was. Obviously CDs, but also having full motion videos, almost like movies. In, um, in video games. And it turned out that that wasn't the case. <laughs> but, you know, to talk about the Sega CD, you can't skip out on the fact that they had, you know, that's a lot of their games, not all of them, of course, but a lot of their games did have a lot of uh, FMVs in them. Okay, so that's basically what the Sega CD was. It's just an attachment, and it came in many different forms, as I will show you in a moment. Um, as I showed you, the Sega Genesis, right? But here's the thing. In order to play the Sega CD, you just don't go out and buy the Sega CD. It's like, oh, well, it doesn't take cartridges, right? It's, you know, you use it for CDs. You need the Sega Genesis. The Sega Genesis attaches to the Sega CD. Which, at the end of the video, like with the Saturn, I'll get into why this system might have led to its uh, downfall. This is the first model of the Sega CD. This is one of the ones that, out of the out of the two base models that came out, this one came out. The Sega CD came out in 1992. I don't remember how much it was, but I believe it was very expensive. I would be. I think it was about maybe 2.99. Uh, so that turned off a lot of people to it. But anyway, this is what it looked like. Uh, there were no buttons on it to eject the tray. Actually, the tray ejected, but you had to push start on the controller. 
order for it to come out. Now, it used the same controller as the Genesis. Actually, the controller hooked into the Genesis. That's how you played. You powered the system by putting the power onto the Genesis. So, you know, without the Genesis, you weren't going to get far. So the Genesis, I'll show you how it works. You have this little uh, metal base that helps with the connection, heat, and all that stuff. Here, Genesis had a little compartment that you would open up and here on the Sega CD snap it in and there you go Sega CD look at the size of this thing right <laughs> but anyway like I said you would use a regular Genesis controller you would power it on the way you would power on the Genesis now one of the other things about the Sega CD that annoyed a lot of people uh, with these models was yes you had to have your Genesis hooked up to the TV and to the wall to power that up but the Sega CD also had its a uh, uh, power source of its own so it's not like you could plug the power source in the Sega CD and that will power up the Genesis no you had two of those big time AC adapters that had to go into a wall unit or an extension cord which was kind of a bummer but you got through it because back in the day what else were we going to do, right? So that's the Model 1 um, of the Sega CD. Uh, let me get into the Model 2. Now, the Model 2, I purchased the Model 1 years ago. I purchased the Model 2. That was the first one that I was able to get. I got that for Christmas 1993. So let me show you that right here. When I, show you, when I do my Sega Genesis video, I'll show you controllers and all that other stuff. Because it was the same. I'll save that for that video. Oh. Yes, I do have two Genesis. Genesis or <laughs> Genesis or whatever. <laughs> this is the, the first model of the Sega Genesis. I don't have the second model, which is short or smaller. But here is the second Sega CD. Another thing, it hooks in. Like I said, this is crazy, right? But this was the second, this was model two. And instead of a, a tray that ejects, it's just that you push a button and the tray opens sometimes. Ah, there you go. And that's where you put the CD. Same thing with the Model 1. It had its own power source. You had to have the Genesis hooked up. It powers on with the Genesis and all that stuff. Um, this was, like I said, the model that I got uh, Christmas 1993. Um, before I show you my other model here. Let me just say something about the Sega CD. One of the complaints about the Sega CD, other than the things I just mentioned, was the fact that the fuse would often blow. Like I said, the Sega CD had its own power source, okay, which looked very similar to the Sega Genesis power source. Well, here's the kicker. Sometimes, you know, kids or whatever, they would switch the power sources, right? It would turn on, then didn't matter, right? You can't do that. You had to use the power source that came with the Sega CD for the Sega CD. If you used a different power source, it would blow the fuse. So you could have bought this, and then maybe six months later, it's no longer turning on. It's no longer powering on. And 99% of the time, it was because the fuse blew. For me, um, I modded it myself. I opened my Sega CD but because my fuse blew. Uh, <laughs> as funny as that sounds, my Sega CD's fuse blew. I opened it up and I put a new fuse in. I wired it to a glass fuse. Uh, the fuses that were used in these Sega CDs didn't look, they weren't glass fuses. They were, uh, they look like resistors actually. Um, they're not as reliable. If the fuse blows in this, I could just simply take off the shell and put another glass fuse in. Solves the problem. But I had to do a little soldering and all that stuff. I'm pretty good with soldering and all that. But that's one of the main complaints about the, the Sega CD when it comes to uh, functioning. Now, the other Sega CD model that I have, there's, a, there's quite a few, okay? Um, the two that I just showed and this other one, which is the last model I have, which is a gem in my collection. The CDX. This is your Sega CD. Now you saw the other two, the two monstrosities. You have the big Model 1 where the Genesis sits up on top and the Model 2 where the Genesis is off to the side. This is an all-in-one. It looks like a Discman. And, you, and it also has one power source and one source to the TV. That's it. It made life so much easier. And it's compact, 
it's nice looking. It goes into a nice little spot. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, you open it like you would do, this fan. It has a little LED screen, all that. And here is the slot. If you just want to play Genesis games, you just put the Genesis game in. And that's it. So it's a Genesis and a Sega CD. Uh, what a fantastic idea. Also very expensive and hard to come by because not a lot of people bought this. Um, so those are the Sega CD models that I have. There are others out there. There's the JVC-XI, which is similar uh, to uh, the Sega CDX. It's not as small. It's like the shape of a Genesis, but it's CD and cartridge all in one with one power source. And the other one is the absolute monstrosity. I believe it's called the Pioneer. The Pioneer Laser Active. Look that up. It's I think it's the most expensive one to get. And it's it looks like a stereo system. It's just crazy. So that was the Sega CD, all the models. I'm sorry I don't have the other two to show you. Um, I would like to get the XI, the XI, but it's a little out of my price range. So like I said, I got the Model 2 for Christmas. Um, I was hearing about the Sega CD. You know, Sega always had those obnoxious commercials talking how, much, how they were so much better than Nintendo. And I watched them, and I saw their Sega CD commercials. And... Uh, I said, yeah, why, why not? See if I could get this for Christmas, and I did. And back in 93, for those of you that watched my comic book history video, you know I was a comic book fan, full-blown, and a Spider-Man fan. So this is what I got. This right here is a reimagining of, of a Sega Genesis game, except on CD. It had voice acting, it had animation, better music, and I think the game played better than the original Genesis one. Um, what else? Here's the, here's the part where, you know, there, there's so many great games for it, but I think the thing about the Sega CD that really puts a cloud over it is what I mentioned earlier in the video, those FMVs. The Sega CD, although it was a pretty cool attachment for the Genesis, it really didn't bring much to the table. You see, the Genesis at this time was beating Nintendo, slightly. Super Nintendo at the time was its main competition, and it was a, you know, it was, that was the heart of the console wars, which I will have a video on. And it was Genesis, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Super Nintendo. Which one was better? At the time, Genesis was outselling the Super Nintendo. But by the end of the Genesis' lifespan, uh, Super Nintendo had overtaken it. But the point of this is it was a popular system. And when the CD came out, it didn't really add too much to the experience. It, the Sega Genesis was infamous for having bad sound. Well, some people may think it was, you know, cool. And I thought it was cool at times, but it clearly was inferior to the Super Nintendo. The Sega CD made it on par with the Super Nintendo. So it didn't really add too much there. The FMVs that were used uh, had shitty acting, which we could look back and have fun with and enjoy. But the fact of the matter is the quality of the videos were not good. They were grainy. They were, it was just bullshit. It didn't add anything to the gameplay. So a lot of people saw that and were just like, eh, do I really need to spend another $200 for an add-on to make my Genesis sort of like the Super Nintendo? I mean, you know, just because it was CDs didn't mean that the games were much better because CD gaming was in its infancy with the Sega CD. So there were a lot of, you know, bad games. And they did a lot of ports, like I showed you with the Amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. That was a good port. But then they released Mortal Kombat. You would think that, wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. Sadly, it really wasn't. Um, it wasn't arcade perfect. I mean, you know, I mean the music was slightly better, but once again, it was plagued with those grainy FMVs, which became more of a distraction uh, when playing. It was like, oh, let's just get to the game, you know. Uh, that being said, I think the Sega CD, because of that dark cloud that was over, is overlooked. And quite frankly, I think, well, maybe I'll get into this a little bit later. It was really the beginning of the downfall of Sega.
I'll talk more about that later. But some of the great things about the Sega CD when it came to games uh, was working designs. Now, I mentioned working designs with the Sega Saturn, right? Well, working designs was with Sega during the Sega CD phase. Actually, working designs has been around for a while. It was with TurboGrafx-16, too. But they made some classic games for the Sega CD that I feel, because people weren't really into the Sega CD, they overlooked. And it was a shame, because they were classics. And they were later ported to other systems, but not all of them. One of which, Lunar, the Silver Star. Fantastic game. Great game. And the very, uh, the very uh, first game uh, that I saw my friend Chris play, as I mentioned in my Sega Saturn collecting video, was... Lunar 2. And like I said, working designs, they really gave you a lot with their packaging. They gave you a great game, great dialogue, great packaging, foil covers, nice little, sometimes they would add stickers in it and all that stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool, you know, if you're a kid and you're like, oh, wow, I got some stickers. It's pretty cool. Other great games for the Sega CD that came from, the, came from working designs. Another classic, Pop Full Mail. And here's another one. Now, I don't have the original, because the original is like the Panzer Dragoon of the Sega CD. I have Panzer Dragoon, but I don't have this one. Snatcher. This game is really cool. Really cool. It's, once again, it's one of those innovative games. It's more of like a point-and-click adventure. But it has a Blade Runner theme. Very um, noir, uh, steampunk sort of atmosphere. Uh, it was released by Konami, the guy that created, actually Hideo Kojima, who created the Metal Gear franchise, created this. As a matter of fact, you see a lot of Metal Gear references in this. A lot. So it's a, it's a joy to play. I think if you had an original copy of Snatcher complete that could run you $600 plus, is the game worth $600 plus? I'd say no. But remember, you got to understand... I'm talking to maybe some comic book fans that are watching. Some comic book fans will be like, oh my god, that much for a game? Well, video game uh, collectors might be saying, wow, you spend this much on a comic book? It's the same thing. You know, sometimes people collect, they may not necessarily read the comic, they may just like it because of the collectability. Well, some people may not actually play the game, they like it for collectability. So some of those high priced video games, why not? Why not get them? I personally wouldn't. Um, I didn't enjoy the game that much. <laughs> Another game that I would like to get very soon, although I have a repo copy, Shining Force CD. Some say the best Shining Force game. Eh, pretty close, pretty close. Another great game. Um, and Sega Genesis had the Shining Force games, as I talked about in my last video. A surprising, surprisingly great game, because movie ga mo games based on movies usually suck. Okay? But this one did not. The Terminator. The FMV sucked, <laughs> as because it is the Sega, Sega CD. But the gameplay and the music in this was just phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. It really captured the essence of this movie. The dark, rainy, noir-type atmosphere. And it was just so fantastic. And the game, this came out, I think, in 93, is it? What was that, like nine years after the movie? I mean, that's like a death sentence for any company that's thinking they're going to make money on a game, or at least back then. Very, very good. I think a lot of people missed out on those games. So here comes to the part where what happened. Now, you could pretty much figure out why the Sega CD wasn't uh, doing so well from the things I said, you know, uh, the, the price... Uh, the, the shitty FMVs and you know it didn't really bring anything new to the table when it came to gameplay and the gaming experience and all that stuff but it was also surrounded with a lot of controversy and some of that controversy gave birth to the rating systems that is the that has been the norm in video games for over 20 years Mortal Kombat was a contributor to that but also when it comes to the Sega CD this game was Night Trap there are many other videos on YouTube that talk about why this game was so controversial and what was the aftermath of it. Uh, so you could check those out. I'm not going to go into detail. But this game, Night Trap, was one of the main reasons, even this cover, they redid the cover and everything, one of the main reasons why we have the rating system today. And that came from the Sega CD. And uh, 
all that stuff, the Senate, sub, uh, Senate subcommittees. It's almost like the EC uh, scenario in the 50s. Remember when comic books were on trial in the 50s? Well, video games were on trial in the early 90s with similar, similar things, uh, juvenile violence and does this cause juvenile violence and all that other stuff. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the Sega CD. Now, as I alluded to earlier, I believe that... Um, with the release of the Sega CD, that was when the that was when uh, you started to see the cracks in Sega's foundation. They were doing so well, but they they took risks, and that's honorable. You know, it's really you know you want to be successful. Sometimes you have to take risks, but I think they took some unnecessary risks, as I talked about with the Saturn releasing it way too early. Uh, and when it comes to the Sega CD, uh, it was a high price tag. Um, it really didn't have too much support. You know, it was there. It wasn't a popular thing to have. They kept releasing newer things like the Sega CDX I talked about. Hardly anyone bought this thing, and it was so expensive. Um, it was so innovative at the time, you know, because of the shape of it, the size of it, what it can do. It could also play CDs, too. If you wanted to walk around with this as your CD player, which, you know, it's kind of big and heavy. It's kind of heavy. But it was also a CD player. It is also a CD player. But it just it just took one too many things. And although I'm not going to make a video on this, at right around the time of the Sega CD, when it was dying, Sega released the 32X, which was trying to give 32-bit graphics to the Sega Genesis. I mean, they just kept that system on life support with the Sega CD and the 32X. And there was just so many mistakes. And I think a lot of consumers were burned by it because the CD, Sega CD, 32X, and even the Saturn, they didn't last long. Even the Dreamcast, they had on average maybe about a two, two year lifespan. I think the longest being belonging to the Saturn here in the States. The Saturn, I think, lasted for maybe about three years. The Sega CD lasted, I think, for maybe about two. The 32X, I think, lasted for about one. The Dreamcast lasted for about a year and a half. It's just, it's a shame. But the Sega CD was the beginning of that. And it's a shame because it really was a fun, it still is a fun system. and It has a great library of games. Uh, very fun and very fun, uh, very fun to play and it has a lot of collectibles too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is another little trip down uh, collecting in memory lane. Um, I'll do a Sega CD collection uh, one day and I'll talk about pricing and all that stuff for those of you that are interested in building a Sega CD collection. But anyway, thank you for watching and take care everyone. Bye-bye.